Essential Ear Training from the Love the Tone series. Melody Chord Relationship. Part 1. Nick Holmes. Question. What do these three tunes have in common? Question 2. What scale degree am I playing above this major chord? Question 3. Would you consider it important for a musician to be able to hear and identify or reproduce a given note over a chord? I would. You see, if you can hear the relationship between a melody note and the underlying chord, you are rocking. If you cannot, you are basically fumbling around, or worse, bullshitting. Without doubt, all great musicians have this skill, and that is why they can seamlessly choose and hear the right notes. In order to develop this skill, I believe it is important to take the time to love the notes and become friends with them. <laughs> to facilitate this, we are going to associate each note degree with a famous song, hereby strengthening this learning absorption process. OK, let's dive in. Those three tunes we heard... Apart from being awesome tunes, the thing that they all have in common is that they all start on the root tonic note. In order to become friends with these notes, we should ask ourselves, how does that note make us feel? It's a very calming, stable note. It's very happy where it is. Okay, what do these two tunes have in common? Well, the answer is not that they are both two killer jazz songs. The answer that I am looking for is that they both start on the sixth degree. Let's check them out again. Here's the sound on the piano. You can hear that the 6th wants to resolve down to the 5th. At this point, I would like to introduce the concept of musical gravity. Look at this diagram. The arpeggio notes, and the other notes, the A, the 6th wants to go to the 5th, the 4th to the 3rd, and the second, or the ninth, to the tonic. We'll get more into that in a minute. OK, moving on. Two more tunes. Can you identify what note they start on? Has a in the Did you get it? It's the third. Here it is on the piano in C. Take the time to play the notes on the guitar or the piano. You can even sing it. A great exercise that a teacher gave me years ago was to record like a backing. And sing these different notes over this drone. To really get the feeling of how they sound. Well, as you can hear, the third is very stable because it's inside the chord. It's the, the third of the major chord. It's a very, very important note, however, because if that was a minor third, the flavor changes. You can change some of the other notes, and the impact on the sound won't be quite so profound. But the third is 
very important for the musical flavor of each chord. Okay, let's listen to two more tunes and see if we can identify the note that the melodies start on. Tonight I'm gonna have myself a real yesterday. All my trouble. Wow. Well, did you get it? It's actually the ninth. Terrific sound, this, the ninth. There it is. Lovely sound. Another kind of folky sound. Really nice colouring. Not a very strong colouring. Okay, let's move on. Can you identify what degree of the scale these two tunes start on? Isn't it rich? Are we a pair? Any ideas? Let's listen to that in C. Well, you can hear, as I mentioned before, that the fourth wants to go to the third. But can you hear? It's quite a strong sound. It's like it's not quite happy there. Angular sound. In classical speak, it's called a suspension. Then it feels at ease when it resolves. Okay, I think it's a good moment to mention the harmonic series. If you're not familiar with it, it's really worth having a look at this. You see, when we hear a note, we are in fact hearing a combination of many notes. Have a look at this diagram, and you can see the low C is the fundamental, the root, and the notes above it are called the harmonics. And the mix in volume of these give the note its timbre or tone color. It's really beautiful, the mathematical relationship that the notes have, and that's why some of them mix better than others. Okay, let's move on. Can you identify what note these two tunes start on? Flintstones, meet the Flintstones, they're the modern stone, it's family. I once had a girl, or should I say, she once had me. The fifth. Here it is on the piano, in C major. That's a nice friendly note, isn't it? Yes, so take the time to listen to that. The fifth. How it makes you feel. Okay, the last diatonic note that we have left is the seventh, the major seventh. Check out these songs. I hear music when I look at you. Wait till I saw the sun. Okay, so this last one is the major, the major seventh. You could say with a musical gravity that it wants to go up to C. that it's perfectly happy on its own or it wants to go down to B flat a lot of the time it goes down to B flat yes it's a very pretty sound that very bright pretty kind of romantic sound hear a lot of it in bossa novas especially Here's like a sheet, a crib sheet, of what we've done so far. I suggest that you make your own and that you go around listening to tunes and seeing if you can identify them. To wrap up, here are some more famous tunes and see if you can identify what notes they start on 
and the answers will be at the end of the video. Moça do corpo dourado do sol de Panema, o seu barco. Singing in the dead of night. How'd you get along? Well, here they are again with the answers displayed. Moça do corpo dourado do sol de Panema, o seu bar. Singing in the dead of night. Well, there you are. There are just a few ideas of tunes that I heard that I liked and that helped me. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, you will subscribe.